Monsieur? <laughs> okay, I gotta focus. I've basically been been kidnapped by two hot demons. I'm all right. I'm all right, guys. I'm all right with this. This is cool. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I'd like to play a game that's part of the Nano Reno Game Jam of 2023 called Flicker of Azure. You let out a sigh and close the door to your apartment. Well, your ex-apartment. Oh no! You knew the lease was ending soon, and the landlord didn't budge. Darn leech. At least you had time to send most of your belongings into storage for the time being. Things you'd almost left behind, and important day-to-day -day items you've kept inside this backpack. Even with all this notice, turns out finding apartments nearby was... and still is... Hard. So here you are, essentially homeless. What fun. Oh no, time to put on a busted hat and live in a train car. Well, you could either stand out here and process it out front of the empty apartment, like a creep, <laughs> or move your buns somewhere else. Not giving you the choice. Move your butt. <laughs> you can recall one of those chain cafes nearby that you could hang around while you sort things out. Falling Star, you think it was called. Yeah, that sounds about right. You pick up your heavy backpack off the ground and head towards the cafe. It's around the corner. Hmm. Oh, leaving my poor home behind. Looking up at the sign, you realize it's actually shooting stars. Well, you are close enough. You decide to head in. Heading in and up to the counter, you're greeted by a red, no, ruby, no, blood moon. Haired man. Not quite crimson, but not dark enough to be sanguine either. What the heck are you going on about? Just give the man your order. Stop admiring his cool hair. You order your regular favorite and stand around for a bit, looking around the cafe while your drink is being made. It's early, but the cafe is on a street that doesn't get much foot traffic in the mornings. So there's only two people here, besides the barista and yourself. They're quietly sipping and reading. You're called up for your drink. In an attempt to not be a nuisance, you pick it up straight away. Scanning the area, you notice there's a free booth seat in the corner near the window. There's also many, many other free seats, but that one looks best to you. Go sit there. I was gonna. Before you sit down, you pull out your laptop and set it on the table. Might as well at least try and get some work done. You're lucky you work remotely, Meaning you'll always be able to have money. But what's the point of money without a home to use it on? I guess you could always work from a hotel room until you find a new apartment. Not the best solution, but at least it's an alright temporary one. Try not to think about it right now. You're stressed enough as it is. You sit down in front of your closed laptop and put your bag on your lap, sifting through the remnants of your apartment. Oh. A water bottle, a few pens and pencils. Ah, the miniature light box you kept near the front door. Oh, huh. Seems that some of the plastic letters fell out. It just says, Welcome to's home. Well, that's annoying. Although it may not have any use right now, it surely would be used in the future. Best fix that and put your name back there. How else will strangers entering your home know your full name? <laughs> You start to pick up the tiny plastic sheets with letters from inside your bag and arrange them into your name. That's such a neat way to, uh... That's such a neat way to get your name in there. There we go. Welcome to Espoir du Vide's home. Perfect. They're probably going to fall out as soon as you put it in the bag again, but look, it's the gesture that counts, right? You gotta find the silver lining in losing your home. What else did you take with you in there? Leftover candies, unopened bar of soap. Oh, a mirror. Oh, am I gonna- Oh, Look at you with your, uh, hair and tired eyes. What color would you call your hair exactly, since you have such an interesting way of- to reference colors? Um... Ooh. Ooh. Ooh! Midnight, I guess? Neat? Midnight, you say? I'd say black, but sure. Hey, listen, dialogue box, don't sass me. <laughs> yeah, that seems 
right? What about your eyes? Radioactive, cemetery, idolish, veiled, black heart, javelin, cautionary, blood rush. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Now, while my eyes are cemetery, I sometimes like to draw them as yellow. It's certainly a choice to call them that. What, what did I just say, dialogue box? What about your skin tone? Might as well come up with a stupid name for that one too while we're here. Did I do something to offend you, dialogue box? <laughs> Fearless, cardamom baby, wax figure, cinnamon buns, varnish, double espresso, forest familiar, eternal. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. I'd say I'm about double espresso. Yummy. Yeah. Those names are ridiculous. You certainly have a unique way of describing colors. You're gonna have a unique way of speaking once I find where your mouth is, dialogue box. Must be from those games you play, probably. Cute! I'm a cute manly man! Either way, that's you. You don't seem to get much sleep, it seems. Or you just look like that regardless. Not sure. Maybe that's why you can't find an apartment. Hmm. Your eyes don't scream, I'm so lovely and nice, now do they? This dialogue box has it out for me. I guess you can't help it. You sigh as you stare deeply into your reflection, playing with the bags under your eyes. You put the mirror away because you're supposed to be doing work. Try your best to not get distracted from now, okay? Getting real sick of your shenanigans, dialogue box. You need you better stop bullying me. <laughs> Pulling out everything you need to get work done, you dive straight into it. Every time you finish your drink, you take a quick break to get up and order a new drink. The barista behind the counter seems very kind. I guess the store doesn't get enough traffic to make him jaded. Mm -hmm. Or he just has a kind heart. Regardless, he seems nice. Back and forth, back and forth. Hey, at least I'm buying something and not just sitting here. Hours pass as you work. Every now and then a person walks in, orders, lingers, and leaves. A man in a suit walks in, orders a hot coffee, and leaves. Two more people, a girl and a boy. The girl is in a long red dress and the boy is in an orange jacket. They order some pink ice drinks and leave. They seem like good friends. A group of five walk in a bit later, a pristine blonde guy who's holding hands with a black-haired boy wearing dirty pants, followed by a person with white hair, and two girls who also seem like a couple. They seem familiar with the barista. After getting their drinks, they hang out outside. The barista finishes up his shift, and they leave together. Oh. You wonder what it would be like to be in a relationship like that. Friends visiting you at work, Having someone with a hand for you to hold. <sighs> it fills you with a longing and mild jealousy. Aww. But you have only a bit more of your work left to do for the day. Please try and focus on that. <clears throat> you don't have that long left to go. Your busy hands tire from the last push, but you've met your quota for the day. Huzzah! Pack your laptop away so you don't have to think about work while cooling down. Don't tell me what to do, dialogue box. Sipping your drink, you continue to watch the array of cafe-goers once again. Just not for much longer. It's rude to stare, you know. A fair number of teenagers walk in. This must be rush hour for this place. The time lines up. School is out right now. Thankfully, you don't have to think about school anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You forget how long it's been since you graduated. A hundred years. Living alone, the days just pass by like trains. Alone, in an apartment all these years, not really talking to people a lot. An apartment you used to have. Don't think about that. This is a new chapter in your life, okay? It'll get better from here. Oh, you're trying to be more positive now, dialogue box? Just watch more people pass by. You deserve that with the amount of work you did. A tall man with blue hair walks in and buys some sort of iced tea. 
He sits down in the other corner booth in the room and reads a book. A girl with pink hair enters and buys the darkest coffee you've ever seen. A man in a tank top with black hair buys two separate drinks, a hot one and a cold pink drink. People come and go. Some linger. Nothing super interesting happens. Except that one girl who pulled up her phone showing the barista something. They rolled their eyes and explained, That's not a real drink here. <laughs> Possibly one of those secret menu drinks you saw online back in the day. The guy with the blue hair eventually leaves. That reminds you that you should probably get going too. You pack the remainder of your belongings back in your bag and pull out your phone. There should be hotels nearby. Cheap ones too, since this area doesn't see many tourists. You have two options. Same prices, similar locations. Most of the reviews are the same. Thinking about your hotels, you look up and stare at the framed flowers on the wall. What a strange decor item for a place that's meant to be cool. Well, at least they're pretty flowers. Wait, is that the blue-haired man's wallet on the table he was at? He only just left. You could run after him and return it. Or he might come back for it. You could leave it with the barista. Maybe you could keep it for yourself. Or you could just not touch it at all, not get involved. You stare at it for a bit, considering your options. Mm hmm? You decide you could probably catch up to him. You were about to leave anyway. Getting up, you throw in your bag and walk over to his table. Grabbing the lonely wallet on the table, you make your way towards the door. Not quite running, but at least a brisk pace. Power walking, perhaps? Getting those steps in? Out the door you go. You look up in a semi-frantic, semi-serious fashion, scanning the horizon. Yo, dude! You look to your left and see the blue-haired man turning around the corner. Target locked on. Now, move your feet. Don't tell me what to do, dialogue box! Walking at that same brisk pace towards the corner, turning it and seeing the man's back again. You breathe heavy and catch up to him, extending your arm to tap him on the back. You tap his shoulder, but he turns. Something trips you up. Oh no! Losing balance in your feet, you fall flat on your delicious succulent behind. Ouchie! Ouch! Hey there. Let me help you. What? <laughs> Him. Him big. The tall, blue-haired man squats down and offers a hand to you. Are you okay, sir? You rub your now sore buttocks and nod, accepting his hand for assistance. You lost your balance there somehow. Wait, you're from the coffee shop. Him. Massive. He's really tall now that you're standing in front of him. Every part of him is tall. So very big. So very big, sir. He's got a little taily po Arms to tail. Y yeah, sorry about that. Seems I might have tripped on your tail, but it's all good now. Oh, did I trip on his tail? Aw. I saw you leave your wallet at the table, so I figured I could catch up to you since I was leaving too. Wait, his tail? Did he have that before? Oh, thank you, sir. You'd be surprised. That isn't a first. Wait, did you just say tail? Uh-oh. You take a better look at him this time. He does, indeed, have a tail. Horns, too. Oh, um, this game was also made by the person who made that other game that I played that I forgot what it was called. Editor B, put a picture of that game somewhere on the screen because I can't remember the title suddenly. But in that game, uh, our friend talked about demons who come to Earth and, like, change their visage to look human. Is he one of those demons that just hangs out on Earth? Those horns were definitely not there before. Are you going to point them out, or...? Uh, don't make me choose. No, no, I'd, I'd better... i better tell him. i better... Sir, you got a little... You got, you got some... You might want to... There. Okay. Y yeah your tail. Also, horns. You have horns. You shouldn't be able to see these. 
Are you human? Last time I checked. I am adorable, though. I would smooch myself. I'm pretty sure I'm as human as human gets. Got kicked out of my apartment and everything. Then how can you see my horns and tail? Only demons can see demon features. You're a demon? Yes, I am. Y you weren't supposed to know that. Crap. Mailed. Dude, just calm down for a second. This is news to me. All I know is when you were in the cafe and I was approaching you just before, no tails or horns. Maybe it's because I touched his wallet? I... it's just... So this is new? Great. Fun. Why is this... As he looks around frustrated, his book catches his eye, and he freezes. Crap. I know what happened. Yeah? Yeah. You're going to have to come with me. I messed up. Bad. Okay. But I'm not really giving you an option. Unless you have something better or important to do. Dude, I'm homeless. I'll go wherever you want me to. <laughs> you don't really have anything better to do. I don't. I really don't. You don't, or you really don't. Thank you for the options dialogue box. Once again, you're making fun of me. I really don't. Yeah, okay. I don't. Fine, but if you're going to kill me, at least make it quick. And at least give me a smooch before you do. Like, like a real smooch. Like, not just a smooch, but a real, like, movie smooch. <laughs> Guy's probably like three feet taller than me. I'm not going to kill you. Stop being dramatic. I just need to take you to my mentors all. See if I can reverse what I may or may not have just done. Uh-oh. And what exactly is that? You'll find out when we get there. Just come with me. Fine, fine, okay, I'm going. Good. Also, please don't stare at anyone else with strange appendages on their body, please. Why? Simple. It's rude to stare. Here's your hat, by the way. It fell off as you went down. You roll your eyes and follow the strange man. Probably not the most publicly safe decision. I mean, I mean, I mean. Him big! <laughs> but it's not like you have any other choices. You follow the man and ignore your other problems for now. Just put a pin in them for now. You'll be back on them later, I'm sure. Will I? Dialogue box? Do you know something that I don't? So, where is your mentor? Oh, just around the corner from Shooting Stars. Uh, oh, that's convenient. After some walking, you end up at what looks like the entrance to an old shop. Although, visually, it looks abandoned. The demon pulls out a keyring, picks a key, and puts it in the lock. Hmm. The lock doesn't... open. Ugh, crap. Wrong one. He flicks through the keys again, picking a key that looks identical to the last. As he puts it into the lock, again, the door doesn't open. Oh, okay, it's this one then. He picks another key that looks the exact same as the last two. Someone needs to get... <laughs> Someone needs to get some color-coded keys cut. These all look the same. Yeah, dialogue box. For once, I agree with you. He once again puts the key in the lock. Oh, this time it does open. Finally. There we go. Third time's a charm. Follow me. Not that I have a choice. Is this the part where you release the gas or something? <laughs> For the last time, I'm not going to kill you. Keep this up, though, and I might. Oh, no. <laughs> you decided it's probably for the best to shut up. As he takes you down a dark hallway, you reach a door. You can barely see it, but it's green, with nothing but an eye hole. The demon takes both his hands, leans up to the door, and whispers to it. The sound of a lock clicking is heard from within. Well, at least we don't have to deal with keys again. <laughs> the demon opens the door to reveal a room, a study. Cool. The walls are lined with books, and there's two desks, and a couch, and a coffee table. 
Welcome to the office. It's a bit messy, but he's just like that. Sit there while I go get him. Okay. You sit down on the black leather L-shaped couch in the corner of the room. The demon leaves through the door on the right side of the room. Mm hmm. It smells of smoke in here. Nicotine smoke. Someone smokes here. You look around the room to see what books you're on. But you have bad eyesight, so you can't make out the titles. You're not wearing your glasses, man espoir. You need to put on your spectacles. You tap your finger on your knee and switch between staring at the door the demon left through and the one you came in. Hmm. You know, you could just leave, if you want. That is an option for you. Dialogue box, are you trying to get me killed? Thoughts? <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? I imagine the dialogue box is just... What you gonna do? Hmm? I just saved, so I'm going to attempt to leave. But I, I don't think that's going to end very well, and that is not what I want to do, but I want to see what happens. Well, that is the sensible thing to do in this situation. You slowly and quietly raise up from the couch, trying to avoid any noises from the leather. Quietly stepping and hunching towards the door, you look back every second to the other door. As you reach the door, you suddenly realize this door doesn't have a handle. Oh yeah. Shoot. You look at the door, perplexed. What kind of door doesn't have a handle? Pushing against it might open it. Nope. Nope, nope. Mailed. Won't budge. As you turn around to look back at the couch, you see the demon standing next to the other door, just staring at you with a disappointed look. What? I, I had to try. <laughs> really? What? All I asked for is for you to sit for a few seconds, and you try to leave. I, I wasn't trying to leave. I was just admiring the workmanship of this door. Like, it doesn't have a handle. That's pretty impressive. Uh-huh. Sure you were. You can't get out anyway. The door only opens with the demon's touch and words. Oh, that explains the... Yeah, that explains why it didn't open. Sit down. Mm. You slouch your shoulders in defeat and walk back to the couch. Either way, he'll be out in a second. He was dealing with some... Business back there. Won't be long. That's fine. You both sit there awkwardly for a few seconds. The demon and... You should probably ask for his name, come to think of it. You must be tired of referring to him as the demon in your head at this point. But, by the way, I didn't get your name. Do demons have names? Huh? Oh, I guess I didn't say my name back there at all. Demons aren't supposed to you know, give out their true names, but, you know, don't, don't question why I know so much about demonology and stuff. <laughs> Demons do, in fact, have names. Yes, just like humans. My name is Wes. It's short for my actual name, but it's a mouthful. What's your full name? What's your full name? I have it, I have it on a thing, right here. <laughs> Espoir du vide? It means hope of the void in French. Oh, huh. Wasn't expecting you to tell me your full name like that. W well, uh, legally to humans, my name is Wes Farreach. <laughs> that sounds made up. <clears throat> That's because it is. My first name is Long, and I don't actually have a last name. What's your Long first name? Why do you have to know? So I can have control and dominion over you for giving me your full name? Just curious, is all. You both sit there, awkwardly, once again. His mentor is taking his sweet time. Mm. I'm sorry I asked. Mm hmm. Wes Huvender. Very cool. <laughs> Please, never, ever, ever say your full name again. W Wes Hivinder? How do you even spell that? With 12 letters in English. 
Also 12 in Japanese. If you want to get fancy, it's only 4 in Demon Omnic's script. Okay. <laughs> I see why you stick to just Wes, then. Mm-hmm. Why don't you have a last name, then? Okay, look. You ask a lot of questions. Before Wes can finish his sentence, and before I can finish reading it, the door behind him clicks. You both stare at it before you try to continue. A meh. A meh. Daddy and father. My goodness, I did not believe any character could get more daddy. Uh -huh. Monsieur? <laughs> okay, I gotta focus. I've basically been, been kidnapped by two hot demons. A man walks out. He's taller than Wes. And that's a shock because Wes is already tall as is. <laughs> his horns stretch above his head and above it is something you've never seen before. A black flame. Large but calm. <laughs> Holy cow! The, 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 the sound that his voice made. Who oh boy, I can't get any deeper than Wes. Is this him? The human? Yes, his name is Espoir. Fascinating. So, what you said was he's able to see past demons' disguises, yes? Yeah, he tripped over my tail and saw my horns. Espoir. What color are my horns? <laughs> Respond normally. Respond uniquely. I like I like that it's established that this character has a, a fancy way of uh, describing colors. Respond uniquely. I would say crimson or blood moon, but no, they're dark enough to be sanguine. And the flame between? Not black, but midnight. What? What? No, no, he's right. They are sanguine. Interesting. So you can see both my horns and flame. He's certainly not lying, then. Could you always see these? No. He claims they appeared the moment he touched my shoulder. Well, that is intriguing. Do you have any idea of the cause? Y yeah I have a vague idea. Elaborate. Well, after work, I was getting in some light research in. The usual, as you'd know. Diligent as always, yes. On my way here, I was reading about demonic curses, and such an you know me. I mouth words as I read, and... You read the incantation under your breath, and now have cursed this man. Aw, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm alright. I'm alright. Guys, I'm alright with this. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. Have I not told you before to not read incantations in public spaces? W well, it wasn't really a public space. Enough! Y yes, sir. The tall demon looks at you intensely. Father, do not look down upon me so intensely. You feel like you're being put up for judgment. After sizing you up, he lets out a large sigh. Well, espoir, it seems you have been cursed to see demons. Or blessed, much is subjective. I would say blessed. <laughs> Your horns are very nice. <laughs> You're not sure how to respond. The perspective on everyone you've had your whole life has been shifted. How long will it last? Ah, forever. Th f forever Yes, you and generations of you to come. If you plan to procreate, you now have been cursed with the eyes of a lesser demon. Yippee! You're flabbergasted. Stunned. Is there a way to reverse it? Not to my knowledge. Besides, there's no real point. Why's that? You've only been cursed to see demons. It's not life-threatening. You're not going to die from it. Lest you say something idiotic or out a demon. That would get you killed. 
Ah, uh, uh, well. So I, I can't see a hot guy and say, look at him, cool horns. Can we even trust that he wouldn't do that? I don't care. It's your mess, Wes. G <clears throat> you and Wes just stand there, a bit dumbfounded by the situation. I mean, I, I see no downside to this. <laughs> he looks like he's contemplating his options. You just look shocked by the news. I would prefer it if he didn't go out and give people weird looks, letting demons know he knows. I wouldn't do that. Much? You would. Your eyes went straight to my horns back there. You were also staring at people in the cafe, too. Different type of rude staring, but there's a clear difference. But with time, I think you could adjust to your new surroundings. Make them less weird. Th then you could train me. I come back here daily and learn and maybe flirt aggressively with you and your boss. <laughs> that is an idea. But I can't trust that in the time you're not here to mess up. Hmm. We could just keep him here until you feel he's ready. C keep me here? Like a prisoner? Nothing of the sort. You'd have freedom to study. I'd also make sure you're fed, free of charge. But you must pull your weight. You look around at the messy study. It does need to be cleaned in here. That doesn't sound bad, but no freedom to leave? I mean, I ain't got nowhere to go. I was gonna go in a hotel. Can I still do my remote job from here? You guys got Wi-Fi? Why would you want that? He's a bit of a homebody, Espoir. He only ever leaves to get coffee and groceries, and that's it. That remark reminds you a bit of yourself. You taking a jab at me again, dialogue box? It's not a bad idea, though. But you must have a home to go to and a job, I hope. Right, that old thing. Wait, this might solve that problem. Uh, yeah! You stay here, yes, against your own will, but then you don't need to look for a place. And you get food! And you get to hang out with two hot demon daddies! A minor win-win situation. You contemplate for a bit, weighing your options. Explain your situation. Tell the truth! I'm broke, I got no place to stay! I was about to bum on a train like a 1930s movie. I, uh, actually just got evicted from my apartment. So, your offer is tempting. What about your job, then? I'd rather you not have to quit. Conveniently, my job is remote. I do all my work from my laptop. Ah, uh, that's convenient. Well, I guess that's probably the best solution for all of us, then. For now, at least. I'll be coming around every day now, though. As if you don't visit every day as is. So, I'm going to be stuck here until you decide so? With him? I'll take you out places on my days off, so you at least get some fresh air. <gasps> like a dog. Okay, I guess. Or like a date? That's a dour way to put it. Not exactly like a dog. You will have to cook for yourself, clean up after yourself. Canines do none of the sort. Ah, okay. Fine, I'll stay. Then it's settled. You'll be living here from now on. Until I say so, at least. It will be interesting having another being living with me again. Perhaps you can be mentored, too. In the knowledge of demonics, that is. He's a good mentor. Rude, sometimes. You two would get along. He chuckles to himself. Eh. Come to think of it, I haven't formally introduced him to you. Espoir, this is my mentor. Ajito? Agito? Ajito. I don't know if it's Ajito or Agito. I'm gonna say Ajito and you can yell at me in the comments if you want. <laughs> Ajito nods his head with a semi-stern but proud look upon his face. Does he have a long name like yours too? Is Ajito short for something? No. Ajito is the name I gave myself when I was young. Not the name thing again. 
Okay, Espoir, you should get yourself settled on that couch. Uh-oh. It'll be your bed for now. Do you need me to grab anything of yours while I'm out, or...? It's all good. I have my essentials here. I've got my laptop and my candy. <laughs> if I need anything specific bought, I'll let you know. Well, okay then. I'm going to go put this book back and then head home for the day. No extensive studying today? How out of character. Not with what's happened, no. It's late anyway. He slaps his hands on his thighs, pushing himself up off the couch and making his way towards the door. I've got some ideas and thoughts to process. I'll be back early tomorrow, though. It's one of my off days from work. Ah, I understand. Salutations, my apprentice. See you both tomorrow. Wes politely bows with his head on his chest before turning around, whispering to the door and exiting. You're now stuck here with Daddy, I mean Ajito, who seems nice enough. He's letting you stay here after all. Well, letting you. I understand that I have stated that you are to make your own meals. But alas, it is now late into the evening, and I for one do not feel the need to exert any more energy. Do you want me to make something? Very gracious of you, but no. I want burgers. Do you want anything? <gasps> we gotta go out for burgers! Best demon ever! Burgers! All of the burgers, fries, nuggies, all of the above, bro! Hee <laughs> hee! Can I get a burger meal? With nuggets? Perfect. I will certainly return with that for you. Wait, you're heading out too? Well, of course. I cannot have food delivered here. Oh, right. Secret location. Well, yes, that. But additionally, the cost of delivery to this place is outrageous considering how close the restaurants are. I will take a stroll. For health. And money. D d man after my own heart. To skip the delivery fees and get a walk in. Okay. Before you go, where's the toilet? He gestures towards the door he came out of. It's through there, although you cannot enter there yet. Why is that? I am yet to attune you to the entrance. If you can retain your bowels until I return, I will attune you for access. Ah, yeah, that's fine. I didn't need to go right now, I was just curious, just in case I did. How tactical of you. I must go now, my stomach is battling my innards. Feel free to peruse the array of scriptures in the library, or settle yourself in while I am absent. But, clear word of warning, do not read anything aloud. As you being the byproduct of that situation, you should know. Don't read aloud. Got it. I shall return momentarily with nuggies. With dinner. <laughs> what a nice demon. Ajito whispers to the door and leaves. Hmm. Well, you have two options. Snoop around or set yourself up. Thoughts? Um, well... Yeah, let's just... Well, first we should save. Eh, snoop around. Let's snoop around. Yeah, that's fair. It's normal to be curious about what's even in these books here. Just don't read them aloud. You get up off the couch and start walking around the desks. Picking up one of the books, you see you can't read the cover. It seems to be written in some sort of language that you don't know. Maybe this is that demonic script that Wes mentioned. You open the book and realize the whole thing is written in the same script. Well, okay then. Put the book down and go look at another? You pick up another book nearby, and it's also written in demonic script. They're all written in demonic script. Hmm, well, guess I better start my Duolingo in demonic script. <laughs> you decide to walk over to the desk and see what's on it. Judging by the disorganization of this desk, it's probably Ajito's. There's books and paper everywhere. Sir, do you need me to clean as well? Because I will. Maybe you should look around again tomorrow. This mess is a lot to get your mind around. Especially after all the mess that's happened today. As you collect yourself a bit, the door opens again. 
It's just Ajito, but he's holding a familiar brown bag. Your stomach grumbles. <gasps> Daddy came home with the chicken nuggies? You didn't realize how hungry you were. I have returned with sustenance. Healthy? No. Delicious? We shall see. He puts his hand into the bag and hands you your dinner. Thanks, Ajito. His eyebrows raise as he quickly pulls back the food. Ajito, you are to refer to me as Lord Ajito. W what But Wes didn't... I jest. Although, I wouldn't be upset if you were to refer to me as such. What if I call you Daddy? How do you feel about that? <laughs> he hands the food back to you. This time, you grab it. Uh-huh. If you need me, please refrain from it. I shall be in my living area. He whispers to the door on the right. Then it hits you. He forgot to give you access to the bathroom. W wait! One thing! The bathroom! He points at the door on the left side of the room. There's the study bathroom over there. It has a toilet and sink. That should be adequate. W what if I need to shower? Also, didn't you say that the bathroom was in your area? He sizes you up once more before sighing. It was simply another jest. Oh, you got jokes, Lord Ajito? If you can hold out until the morning, you may use my bathroom to shower. Tomorrow. I... I guess. Good. He turns back to the door and leaves you alone in the study. You pick up your food and start munching away at it. So much has happened today. I met two daddies, and one of them gave me chicken nuggies! You were kicked out of your apartment, trying to do a good deed, and somehow got cursed. Now you're stuck in this study for who knows how long. You ponder about what the future holds for you. Hmm. But the future can wait, because sadly, this is the end of the demo. Thank you for getting this far. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I quite am Dialogue Box, who's been jabbing at me this entire playthrough. Due to the time constraints of the game jam this was created for, the Nano Reno Jam of 2023, I've had to leave this game in an unfinished state. But the full release will be coming. To keep updated on the development of this game, feel free to follow me on itch.io or my Twitter, and there will be a link in the description to this game here where you can follow the developer for any more development. For now, the story must end, but with patience, all will be revealed. So long for now. The real question, will I get any smooches from these daddies? <laughs> well, that was nice. That, that was a heck of a lot of nice. I really like this game so far. Remember, a great game is never rushed, and I know this one has been in development for a little while, but uh, follow the developer, and you shall see any updates. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope. I kinda want some chicken nuggies. I want some chicken nuggies.